Cobbiz. Hello and welcome to Cobbiz. My name is Shalin Verma and in today's video we will discuss the CPCB guidelines for the pollution control and safety in coal handling units. So, first let's understand what are coal handling units. A coal-based thermal power plant consists of an integrated system and equipments ranging from electrical, mechanical to instrumentation and control. The entire thermal power plant system can be broadly classified into a main power generating plant comprising of steam generators, steam turbines along with their associated auxiliaries and a balance of plants or the BOP which includes equipments other than those in the main system. These auxiliary plants are meant to handle coal and the waste generated through coal processing. The components of the BOP system includes the coal handling unit, ash handling unit, fuel oil handling and unloading system, water circulating system, water treatment system and fire detection and protection alarm system. Now if we talk about coal handling plants, the unit will consist of the coal unloading area that is the track hopper unloading, wagon tippler unloading systems etc, coal crushing, coal stacking and reclaiming at the stockyard, dust control and ventilation system, miscellaneous facilities like sump pumps, cooling water systems etc. Now the coal handling section of the power plant has a high pollution generating potential which is why the CPCB came out with the standard operating procedures for these units. The authorization for new units that want to use the residues will be granted authorization only after the verification of details and the minimum requisite facilities as given in the SOPs. Therefore, the facility must ensure that the coal waste that is being handled and intended for utilization belongs to the same generation source as specified in the standard operating procedure. Also, the end use product produced from the waste must be the same as specified in the SOPs. So, what are the standard operating procedures for coal handling units? Let's understand. First is the SOP for the location. For the setup of a unit, the project proponent must not use any agricultural land and it must be located at least 250 meters away from any agricultural field. A government owned wasteland that is not suitable for agricultural purpose and meets the requisite siting and distance criteria must be preferred for establishing any coal handling plant. The unit must also be at a minimum 500 meter distance from the residential areas, schools, colleges, historical monuments, religious places and ecologically sensitive areas. The unit must be at least 500 meters away from railway lines, expressways, national highways, stateways and district roads. Next comes the storage guidelines and the SOPs for handling. The unit must store coal in such a way that the coal heap should not be higher than 5 meters and the clear distance between two adjoining heaps must be at least 5 meters so that in case of fire, the approach is available. There should be a mechanized loading and unloading system in the stockyard for loading the product into the vehicles. Next, the unit must ensure that all the trucks before leaving the storage area must be showered with water and must be covered with tarpaulin and not overloaded to ensure that there is no spillage during transportation. The vehicle carrying the coal should not be overloaded by raising the height of the carriage. Way scales must be provided within the loading area and the port or the coal park authority must ensure that no overloading is done. So the next guidelines are related to the structure of the unit. The coal handling unit and agencies must provide a paved approach with adequate traffic carrying capacity. Units must construct compound walls all along the periphery of the premises with a minimum of 9 meters in height. Continuous water sprinkling must be carried out on the top of the heap regularly to prevent the dusting, fire and smoke. To prevent any fugitive emissions during loading unloading, a fixed pipe network with sufficient water storage and pump must be installed. Water sprinkling must be carried out at each and every stage of the handling to avoid the generation of coal dust or other dust within the premises. The coal handling unit must ensure regular sweeping of the dust from the internal and the main road and also ensure that there is adequate space for the free movement of vehicles. The next is the air pollution control measures. Dust contamination and suppression system for coal stack loading and unloading must be implemented. Construction of an effective wind breaking wall to prevent the suspension of particles from the heaps. Systems for regular cleaning and wetting of floor area within the premises. 
the entire godown must be covered with permanent weather shed roofing and side walls in case of crushing sieving or grinding activity is carried out an adequate apcm should be installed Finally the safety requirements the entity must ensure to provide adequate fire fighting measures to avoid any fire or related hazard including good water storage facility that must be exclusively used for the storage of coal an on site emergency plan must also be prepared and implemented now it is also important to understand the legal criteria as applicable on coal handling unit every coal yard owner coal handling unit coal importer must ensure that necessary permissions from all the applicable regulatory authority and the adequate steps under the provisions of applicable acts and rules are being taken the unit must not carry out the operation of loading or unloading at any place until adequate air pollution control equipment for dust control suppression is installed the unit must also prepare an environmental management plan and implement the same in true spirit and thus maintain the overall environment of that area the unit must also operate a continuous ambient air quality monitoring as per the cpcb guidelines the result of parameters like spm rspm so2 and nox must be submitted to this spcbs every month now the coal handling plants and coal washeries must obtain a number of clearances and approvals from the spcbs and the cpcb and some other regulatory agencies any business in the coal industries may need close to 19 major approvals and clearances also these businesses are required to coordinate with the state department environmental agencies at the state and central level as the coal mining and related businesses are placed in the red category of industries the licenses and approvals needed by coal businesses include the environmental clearance as per the eia notification of 2006 cte and cto mining lease forest clearance and wildlife clearance clearance under the applicable safety and labor laws an environmental management plan and resettlement and rehabilitation plan in case of families being displaced and finally an ehs plan for the protection of workers now if we look at the major documents that will be needed the list will include a detailed project report an environmental impact assessment report environmental management plan nocs from the local authorities the public hearing report financial statement or any other document that may be needed by the authorities now if you are looking for the assistance in environmental compliances for such a unit you can contact our experts from cobbis from the details shown with more than 10 years of experience in handling approvals and licensing needs for various kinds of industries around the country cobbis can be the one stop solution for assistance in overall legalities for your business so that was all for this video please like the video and subscribe to our channel if you found our work helpful thank you for watching